It's time for the Douglas Coleman Show. Mr. Smooth and Savvy is joined by guests from all walks of life. From the entertainment industry to authors to political and social commentators. The famous and not so famous. The controversial and the light and fluffy. We have it all. Now, here is Douglas Coleman. Hello, 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 hello there. Welcome to the Douglas Coleman Show. It's me, Douglas Coleman. How are you? Thank you for joining us. Nice to have you with us and nice to be here. We've got Margie Singleton here today. Margie is a singer-songwriter who has been in this business for a long time. She started back in the late 1950s, and in the 1960s she was a popular duet and solo recording artist, uh, working with country artist George Jones and Farron Young. She had her biggest hit with Farron Young called Keeping Up With The Joneses in 1964. And she's been working a successful solo career through the 60s. She recorded nine top 40 Billboard country singles, including a top five hit. And now at the age of 82, Margie Singleton is back with a couple of songs, including Jesus Is My Pusher and Heaven or Hell, which we're going to play Heaven or Hell on the show during the interview. We had a nice conversation. We talked about her career, talked about the music industry, and I think you'll enjoy it. Before we get to Margie, we've got a couple more songs from Robert Marino, who was nice enough to send us a couple of songs for last week's show. And he sent us two more, which we're happy to play. Uh, the first one is called Daddy Please. And the second one is called Cool Heat. And we'll get to those in just a few minutes. Before we get to the music, though, I've got a couple of announcements. We've been doing this show for over three years now, about three and a half years. And we've had many exciting guests on. And I've enjoyed doing this show tremendously. We started a GoFundMe page as kind of an alternative to our Patreon page because some people don't want to subscribe and pay every month. Primarily, the Patreon page is for people who want to buy sponsorship packages because it's a monthly thing, and if you're going to pay every month, you probably should get something in return other than just our fabulous show. So we've been offering sponsorship packages where we will play your ad on the show or mention your product, depending on the tier level you choose. However, some people don't want to do that. Some people don't have a product to sell. So if you were looking to just do a one-time donation to help out the Douglas Coleman Show continue its programming, we have started a GoFundMe page. And you can give just one time. Any amount is greatly appreciated. The link to the GoFundMe is on our website, on our Facebook, on our Twitter. Or if you just go to GoFundMe.com and search Douglas Coleman Show, we will come right up in the search. And you can click on the link there and make your contribution to our show. We greatly would appreciate anything anybody can provide. It helps us to continue our programming to pay for costs incurred in programming creation. Okay, so now with the music by Robert Marino, and then a short commercial break, and then we will lead in with a song by Margie Singleton and then her interview. So first one up is Daddy Please, words, music, and production by Robert Marino, vocals, Kitty Dandridge, electric guitar, Jason Chance, Acoustic guitar, Stephen Sheehan. Keyboards, Jimmy Nichols. Electric bass, Sam Hunter. Drums, Paul Schloten. And the second song is called Cool Heat. Words, music, production by Robert Marino. Vocals, Kitty Dandridge. Organ, Greg Mayo. Electric guitar, Robert Marino. Upright bass, Chris Anderson. Drums, Zach Jones. The music, short commercial break. And then the interview with Margie Singleton. Get the keys, yeah To the 
Cold fire knows no in between. Devil comes on with cool heat. He comes on oh so suddenly. No end to his means makes you so easily and takes what he needs. With the heart of cold fire and all that cool heat comes on you oh so suddenly. Does he do it only for the pleasure? Does he do it only for the pain? Comes on with a cool heat, saboteur of dreams. Beware, pretty baby, spell so complete. For a heart of cold fire and knows no in between. Devil comes on with cool. Cold fire, it knows no in between. Devil comes on with cool heat. Devil comes on with cool heat. He come on with cool. Listening to Mr. Smooth and Savvy right here on the Douglas Coleman Show. We'll be right back after these commercial messages. Hi there, this is Stuart Epps, record producer. This is my story about Elton John uh, working with him in those early years, going back to 1967 at Dick James, uh, all the amazing tours, those first recordings, uh, going through to Rocket Records. And uh, it's an amazing story about his incredible rise to stardom and my part in that. So uh, look forward to taking you on that journey. So here we go. Yeah, and to order this great audio CD, please just email me at stuartepps at talk21.com. That's Stuart, S-T-U-A-R-T, Epps, E-P-P-S, at talk, T-A-L-K, 
21 in figures.com. Stuart Apps at talk21.com. Email me and I'll give you all the details for buying this brilliant audio disc. Thank you. Bye. Acclaimed author of Garden, Jane Yates brings you the first book in a new trilogy, Octopus Pirate, a story of a foundling who has unusual talents, such as the ability to communicate with octopuses. As a baby, he was washed up on an island off the Scottish mainland. An eccentric former nun who lives alone with cats brings him up. He joins a circus and narrowly escapes plots against him. Flees to Cornwall, builds a replica pirate ship that's also an airship to travel back in time to fight real pirates. Get your copy today from Amazon, only 99 cents. Tired of living in a culture of lies, fake news, and alternative facts? The Pro-Truth Pledge reverses the tide of lies by calling on politicians, and everyone else, to commit to truth-oriented behaviors. The Pledge asks signees to commit to 12 behaviors that research in behavioral science shows lead to truthfulness, such as clarifying one's opinions and the facts, citing one's sources, and celebrating people who update their beliefs toward the truth. Private citizens who sign the pledge get the benefit of contributing to a more truth-oriented society. Public figures get more substantive rewards for signing the pledge in the form of positive media and public recognition. The pledge crowdsources the truth by asking volunteers to evaluate the statements of public figures who sign the pledge. Take the pledge, demand that your elected representatives do so, and encourage your friends to take it at ProTruthPledge.org. DJC Music and DJC Productions are pleased to announce a brand new website. We have started a listing website for radio show hosts as well as potential show guests. This is a meeting site where hosts and guests can come together. Show hosts can list their show and types of guests they're interested in booking. Potential guests can list their talents, bio, accomplishments or anything they feel makes them an interesting radio show guest. There are no recurrent payments, only a one-time $5 listing fee. Your listing will stay up until you decide to cancel. Previous guests of The Douglas Coleman Show are welcome to submit their guest listing free of charge. Go to radiohostsandguests.com. That's radiohostsandguests.com. With Adventure Boundless, best-selling author Jane Yates follows up her acclaimed Paradox Child trilogy with Garden, a steampunk science fiction novel with fantasy overtones, enjoyable for all ages. Inspired by the classic novel The Secret Garden, Garden begins with 11-year-old Aberdeen living in space above a perilous Earth. Aberdeen is looked after by her robot nanny, but she is often used to being alone, dreaming of dragons and castles. The sudden death of her parents forces her to live with her neglectful uncle on Earth and is captivated to find a world repairing itself. Fascinated by her new surroundings, Aberdeen makes new friends and explores the boarded-up house, only to discover a mysterious tunnel leading to wondrous things. Follow Aberdeen's journey of self-discovery, of trials and friendship. Garden narrated by acclaimed actress Anna Parker Naples. Go listen, download and subscribe to The Douglas Coleman Show. It's available at the website douglascolemanmusic.com slash DCS. Also on iTunes, Spreaker, and YouTube. The Douglas Coleman Show is an internationally syndicated talk and music show that features fascinating and sometimes famous guests from all aspects of the entertainment industry. The topics can range from light and fluffy to sober and serious. Our focus is on music artists, but we also feature producers, authors, directors, and even promoters. The Douglas Coleman Show. Sometimes chat, sometimes music, always entertaining. Again, it's available today at the website douglascolemanmusic.com slash DCS. You can also connect with them on Facebook at Douglas Coleman Show 1. Follow on Twitter at Douglas Coleman 3. And you can even find them on TuneIn Radio. Again, that's the Douglas Coleman Show at the website douglascolemanmusic.com slash DCS, iTunes, Spreaker, YouTube, and more. Go listen, download, subscribe, and share with your social networks today. Old memories 
that you left behind I knew I had to move on if I wanted to survive So I just buried your old memory alive I tried to kill my love for you With no success in sight I've tried to kill your memory It refuses to die It keeps hanging on Hanging on for dear life So I just buried that old memory alive Oh, memories that you left behind I knew I had to move on If I were to survive So I just buried your old memory alive That you left behind I knew I had to move on If I wanted to survive So I just buried that old memory alive I just buried your memory alive Okay, please welcome to the Douglas Coleman Show, Margie Singleton. Hi, Margie. How are you? Hey, Douglas. I'm doing well. Doing well. It's a beautiful day here, and uh, I'm in Hendersonville, Tennessee. Just a hop, skip, and jump from Nashville. It's kind of a suburb. For some reason, I thought you were from Texas. No. I never lived in... Well, my, my husband had a radio station in Texas, at one time and we worked a lot in texas we did a lot of shows in texas but never called it home um louisiana was my birth home and tennessee's been my home for the past 60 years oh well i guess you're from tennessee then (laughs) yeah i'm from tennessee (laughs) okay you know i'm looking on i'm looking on your bio here and your birthday is going to be in two days yeah yeah you know that's a story you might want to hear um, I'm, I was delivered by a midwife, and uh, my mom always, my birthday was October the 5th. So Leon and I, Leon Ashley, my husband, went to, to Europe on a tour, oh, back some 20 years ago or so. And uh, my birth certificate I had to get, and it said October the 12th. Needless to say, that was a week later, and I had to change all my records. So my official date, as far as my records are concerned, it's October the 12th. So I just took that and celebrated all week. Oh, there you I go. figure I need longer to celebrate, and, and nobody needs to just have one day to celebrate such a great event, don't you think? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> if my birthday could go on for six months, I'd be happy. Me too. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, is it okay if I mention your age? I'll be 83 years old, October the 5th through the 12th. Hey, that's fantastic. I hope I get there. I really do. Well, you probably got a long way to go, but God has been good to me. Uh, of course, I said I was married to Leon Ashley. We were in the music business together. He, I don't know if you're familiar with him. He had a, a huge 
a very huge record, his first record out. On uh, He wrote the song called Laura, What's He Got That I Ain't Got? And it uh, he he it became a number one hit all across the board. He wrote it, he produced it, he published it, he put it on his own label and carried it to number one, which mm-hmm. no one else I don't think to this day has ever done. And uh, that's all in in the history books and everything. And I'm proud of that. And uh, uh, we were married 48 years, and he passed away in 2000. 13 October 20th the 75 years wow. and I he was he was sick from 2006 to 2013 and um, we of course didn't work anymore and I wasn't going to work anymore but uh, in 2015 uh, this young man wanted to book a, a show for my 80th birthday and me me be the star on it and I said no I'm not going to sing without Leon but my family, my fans, and friends encouraged me to, and it just rekindled a fire, and God put me in a path to record my gospel CD that I put out last year called On the Other Side of Life, which is a song I wrote about Leon's passing. And it's a song that touch, touches a lot of people who have lost their loved ones, and um uh, it's been good, and God is good. He's done so much for me. I'm up walking. I don't have any any killer diseases. I'm so blessed. Jesus has blessed me tremendously. Oh, and he's given me this song, Heaven or Hell. Um, I've been talking so much, I didn't let you get in to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. That's what we like. We like guests to talk. It makes my job a lot easier. <laughs> Um, okay. The one thing I was going to ask is that how long have you been in the music business? I think you've been in a long time. Yeah, I've been into it since I was in my teens, 1957, I think. I uh, started out going to the Louisiana Hayride. I always wanted oh. to sing. I bought me a guitar, wrote songs, and I wrote one that a fellow by the name of Benny Barnes, who had a, a song, hit song called Poor Man's Riches. And he, I asked him to listen to some of my songs, and he liked one of them. And it was called Mine, All Mine. And he was going to Houston to record it with Happy Daily, uh, owner of uh, D Records and Starday Records. And he asked us if we wanted to go, and I did. And Happy, he got him to listen to me that night to, to the audition. And he liked what he heard. I don't know how he did, looking back, but... He recorded my first session that night, and it's been it's been a you know just a a constant thing in my life. Music, if without my song, I without my God first, my family and my song, I would be I would be down for the count. But that's kept me going. So you've been a professional musician your whole life. Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. I recorded my I recorded. With, I was the first woman to record an album with George Jones. I have 14 sides on an album called Duets Country Style. And uh, I didn't know it until their family in, in Germany just released a box set on George. His his recordings on Starbase, all his recordings on Starday Records from, I think, 1956 to 1963. And... Um, I have 14 sides in there, and I have about six pages of pictures and biographies and such. I was so proud to to be added to that compilation, and because it's historical. I was there with him first, and and they should have put it in there, and they did, and I'm just thrilled to death. Uh, I told you 12 sides. Well, there's an interesting story there. There were two sides I didn't know, but had put in the can they call it put back for some reason they got lost in time and and uh, the the bear family has it in that album but i was riding along with my guitar player one day and one night coming from a a, a show and and uh, he had to uh, had youtube on or something and started playing a song called uh, one by one and and his name's Lonnie Spiker, and he, Lonnie said, 
Miss Margie, that is you and George. I said, no, it's not, Lonnie. I, that's not in the album. And we argued the whole whole time the song was playing. He said, well, Margie, that's you. I said, it sounds like me, but I don't remember cutting that. And uh, so it, it went off, and there it was, Margie Singleton and George Jones. And I said, well, I'll be that was me <laughs> if I'd have been betting out a lot. But it's, it's one by one was added extra, and also uh, uh, one excuse as good as another was added to that album that I didn't remember cutting, you know. But as you you do so much stuff, you don't remember everything you did, do you? Uh, no, I would imagine not. I did want to ask <laughs> you, um, since you've been in the business for so long, the music industry has completely turned upside down from what it was. In the 1950s and it. 60s. Yeah. And you've done probably the whole gamut from vinyl records to cassette tapes oh, yes. to CDs. Right. And now to digital and downloads. And now going back to right? vinyl. <laughs> right. So that. what do you think of the new music industry with digital and all of this? What, what do you think of it? Or do you think, did you like it better when people just went out and bought vinyl records? Of course. But, you know, progress, they say, but what they're doing is, is they're finding that progress. People love to hear the old, old vinyl things. They're going back to it. They're, you do, you, they're selling vinyl now. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. And, and so I, I like that era. I love the era that you could go in and, and t to a radio station, you know, and take your record and let them audition it and, send them a record and they would play it you can't do that anymore i'm considered unplayable by the by the mainstream radio but thanks to you guys i am becoming you know i'm, I'm being heard and people are liking what they hear uh not being uh vain or anything but i'm i'm getting a lot of old fans finding me again and um, a lot of new fans listening and i'm just i'm grateful to you guys because you know what that's where us independent artists are going to be getting our our music heard and i'm so grateful to you and all the others scott weichel in, in uh, wisconsin uh no traverse city michigan he is of mine and and a lot of the guys have become friends you know i just talked to uh, him. I can't remember his last name, but um, I just talked to him in in um, Canada, and uh, he he just sent me a friend request, and so I thought that was cool. I'm becoming friends to a lot of you guys, and 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 uh, just learning about y'all, and y'all learning about me, and I want to say to your audience, I hope and pray that you will listen to this new song, Heaven or Hell. And, and take it to heart. That's the mission that God has me on right now. My my pastor asked me, he said the Lord had put upon his heart to preach a revival about hell. And also he wanted me to write a song about it. Well, I, I believe in prayer and, and, and I certainly believe in God. And I just had to ask his help on it. And I'm telling you, he gave it to me. I wrote it down, and I brag on it because it's God's song. It's not mine. It's the best best of anything Margie Singleton has done or had in my whole career. And uh, if you listen to it, it's just a graphic picture of what hell is. Uh, we hear all about heaven, how wonderful it's going to be, and it's going to be. But hell is real, too, and people need to know that. Well, why don't we listen to it now? Because that was a great segue for the song. Why okay, good. Why don't we play it right in here? This is your new Thank single, you. is that right? This is your new one, your latest My one? new single. Okay. I have a video out on it and a, and a CD on, on CD Baby. Oh, okay. Well, this is Margie Singleton and Heaven or Hell. Heaven or hell, what will 
will it be? It's up to you to decide. Heaven or hell, make up your mind while you still have time. Picture a dungeon, shackles and chains. Picture no sunshine. Picture no rain. To quench the everlasting fire That tortures endlessly Picture you there Feel the fire Heaven or hell What will it be? It's up to you to decide Heaven or hell, make up your mind While you still have time Picture a world With God's spirit gone Picture you left behind Stand all alone Picture you Knocking on heaven's door Close to you Forevermore Picture you there Fade the fire Heaven or hell What will it be? It's up to you To decide Heaven or hell, make up your mind While you still have time Picture you giving up On your fellow man Picture you failing To lend a helping hand Picture him lost Because you closed your eyes and walked on by Picture him there Feel his pain Heaven or hell, what will it be? It's up to you to decide Heaven or Listen to the cries of pain and torture Begging for just one sip of water To soothe the parched and the burning tongue of the sinner I Listen to the cries of pain and torture Begging for just one, one sip of water To soothe the parched Oh, very nice. Very nice. I Thank like you. That. I hope I hope your listeners like it. Did you write the words and the music to that? Yes. Oh, very good. Yes. So, what kind of a process do you have for writing? Do you uh, have to get inspired to write, or do you just sit down like a job and you, say, okay, today I'm going to write no. a song? No. I, I love my music so much that I, I usually sit down with my guitar every day and, and sing something. And in my process of writing, it's very funny. I'll just start singing just just lines, meaning nothing. And all of a sudden, I will come up on something that may be viable. And I go with that. 
and I just do the melody and the and the words at the same time. It's kind of strange, but that's how I do it. Well, everybody has a different style. Everybody has a different mm-hmm. process for writing. I can't do the. I can't do too well by doing the words, then putting music to it, or music and then putting words to it. I'm not too good at that. A lot of people want to write with me, and I do write with a few people that were compatible, but I do better by myself. Uh, but because I do write the music and the the lyric at the same time. Now, you were in the music industry when the rock and roll Craze started back with Elvis mm-hmm. Presley, and what did you think of rock yeah, and roll Elvis music? I loved it. Yeah, I loved rock and roll. I loved rhythm and blues. I loved country, and I loved gospel. I had been a combination of all those three. You will notice I, Margie Singleton is no household name, and I realize that. And I have analyzed the fact that because I haven't had, you know, country back then was the the high-pitched, nasally sound in a lot. Yeah. Uh, harsh. My voice is, I sung harder on this song because I was getting the message across, but usually my voice is very, very soft. And uh, I didn't have that that loud uh, voice that most of my peers had. And so I kind of was, was overlooked for the fact that I, I had I had all those genres in me, the the rhythm and blues, country, uh, gospel, and and uh, rock and roll. I listened to all that music. There was a station in Nashville. I lived in Shreveport, Louisiana, but I used to listen to a guy named John Richburg. They called him John R. on WLAC radio in Nashville, and we got that station in Shreveport, and. Uh, I always listened to him, and he played rhythm and blues, and I just I just loved it. And then I would listen to to Ralph Emery on gospel. I mean, on country, you know, just go from one to the other. So I picked up all those. If you ever listen to any of my music, I have all a little bit of all that in me. Used to. <laughs> now I'm old. Well, I was just the reason I brought up Elvis is because you said you've been from Tennessee, and he was from. Originally from Mississippi, but then he moved Mm -hmm. to Tennessee. So I didn't know if you guys were neighbors. He was on the Louisiana Hayride, (laughs) and he he was there when I was there, and I did play some shows with him. I never got close with him. Uh, You know, he would come off and go, and and, uh, but he 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 came to the Louisiana Hayride from Memphis and played a lot there. Oh well, okay. So Mm -hmm. you you were pretty close. Almost met him. No, you could say. Well, I did meet. You did him, meet him, but yeah. I didn't didn't become great friends with him. Well, of course, he just came for a show and left. You know, he didn't live in Shreveport, so uh, I knew him, but I didn't know him. You know what I mean? You don't. Yeah. It, you, you just meet and and go, uh, like you do a lot of people. Uh, he was. I loved him. I didn't holler and scream because I I didn't do that. <laughs> so how many how many songs have you written in your life now? Do you know? You know, I would have to look it up. Um, I've been going to do that. A lot of my fans, about three or four of my fans, know more about me than I know myself, more than I've ever forgotten. And I know I've written over 200 songs. Wow. Oh. Uh, YouTube has a lot of them. Pandora has a lot of them. Uh, iTunes, they're they're all over Facebook. They're all over the internet. I'll have to count them up and let you know. All right. So you've written. <laughs> if you've written two hundred songs, have you recorded all of them, or do you have a pile of stuff that you've never recorded? Most of the stuff we've recorded. Most of the stuff. I have at home on record, on vinyl, on on uh, tape. On uh, we have, I have sessions that's never been released. Uh, on twenty four track, on, we started out doing two track tapes. That's how we recorded right. back in the day. Yeah, the musicians was on one track, and the singers and the voices was on the other track. And if you didn't get it, then 
you had to start from scratch, you know, or they could splice the tape. Now splicing is just, oh, man, they got it made. All they got to do is hit a button, take that out, and move it over. You know, cut it's and amazing. Paste. It's changed so much. Yeah, just cut and paste. I, That's all they have to do. Mm-hmm. I just recorded a new song the other day that I hope I can get to you. If you'll, send, if you'll friend me on Facebook, I'll send you some stuff and give me your email address. I have a... I'm going, I have four boys, men in the business that sing with me, and they call me Mama. I'm their Nashville Mama. And it's become kind of a, a joke, yet my music kids are there for me. They help me. They take me places. Take, like next week, we're going to South Carolina, and my boys are going with me to play with me. We're doing a show for the uh, American Cancer Society. Oh, that's great! And uh, so I'm doing. A, I'm doing, going to be doing a CD. I've already got some of the songs recorded. I'm doing a CD called Mama and Her Boys, and it's going to be so cool. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting it out. And if you want me to send it to you when I finish it, if you would send me your email address, I'll send you a MP3 or something on it. Oh, that'd be super. Yeah, I'll give that to you when we... Uh... I appreciate you listening to it and see if you can play it. You play every, like country and gospel, don't you? I play everything. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely everything. That's good. Rock that and roll. makes for a, a good show. You know, it's it, it really does. I mean, I appreciate country, but I don't appreciate the new country. I mean, it's great. And let me say that it's good music. My goodness, who couldn't? that but it's not country they need to have another name for it um, you know that's what all of us traditional country people wish them success to have their success but have another name for it it's not country well i you, you know, know what i agree with you and it used mm-hmm. to be called soft rock or southern rock mm-hmm. and back in the mm-hmm. 70s and i have this conversation with other musicians too that when mm-hmm. you call it new country, it's confusing because what happened was rock and roll kind of died on the music mm-hmm. scene. And so all of the people that were playing soft rock and Southern rock and Americana type rock, there's so many kinda different genres. They migrated over and called it new country. And that's yeah. what happened. Well, it happened that, uh, you know, maybe they'll wake up. No, they're, they're having success, and and uh, it don't matter to them that it's not. Uh, if if the, ra- the traditional radio stations would realize that people are hungry, you know how hungry they are. You've got many, many listeners, fans, who want that traditional country music. And there's a lot of people, young guys, like this Mo Pitney, like uh, Richard Lynch, uh, are coming back with that music. A lot of the younger girls, they're loving it. And they're going to bring it back to the forefront, you know. And, and if traditional radio would realize that and get on it, people would, the country listeners would come back right. to them. But as it is, they're listening to you guys, which is good. But uh, I'd like to be played on on uh, traditional radio. I have some disc jockey friends who are on traditional radio, but they don't play my records. They used to, but they don't now. They play the new stuff, you know. Well, I've had Richard Lynch on this show, and I do like his music. I love him. Yeah. I love him. I love him and his wife. They're just precious people. Um, he's got a little radio show, too, that he does. And I, I filmed, I did that with him recently. And I'm going to go up to Ohio. I think it's where he lives. And he's got a, a ranch out there that has a music venue. And he wants me to come up and play a show there, you know, as soon as we can arrange it. Oh, that's fantastic. Margie, what I want to do is I want to uh, kind of wrap up the interview and I'm okay. going to play one of your songs for an, an outro. 
There's two on here. Richard, uh, sorry, Michael sent me six of your tracks, and two of them have very mm -hmm. interesting titles that I wanted to ask you about. One is called okay. Peculiar People, and the other one is called I Buried Your Memory Alive. Tell me about uh, those tracks. Peculiar People is, it is a biblical thing. The Bible says his people are a peculiar people. And so that's where I got that from. If you would play that song, it's on my last CD called On the Other Side of Life. But Peculiar People is a very interesting song. It, 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 I'm one of a peculiar people made by the hands of God. It, it's, a, it's a hymn. It's a gospel song. And, and, and I buried your memory alive. I'm not really pushing that right now. It may be in my new country album. Um, I, uh, wrote that a, a, one of my friends called me one night and he said I want you to write me a song about a woman that just turned away from somebody turned away from me thought I was going to get back with her and she wouldn't just write me a song about it and then, so that's what I came up with I went to a funeral last night I buried old memories that you left behind I knew I had to move on if I wanted to survive, so I just buried your old memory alive. That's what it's about. <laughs> you know, I thought that's Bearing what it was them. about. It sounded like a jilted love kind of title that it, somebody it would is. write. You broke up with me, so I'm going to just bury the memory oh, of you. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Well, Margie, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. We got to wrap this up, you unfortunately. Too. I hope I didn't talk your ear off. No, but your listeners. I want to thank very much for for listening to my music and ordering it. Uh, CD Baby, uh, uh, Margie Singleton Music dot com, uh, iTunes, uh, Amazon. I think Michael has got them all on there. But CD Baby, you can upload or down. Is it download? Yeah, you can download, download. the yeah. single, <laughs> the single, and you can buy the physical CD through CD Baby. All right, super. So you want to introduce the song, and then we'll play "Peculiar People" on the way out. It's a it's an up tempo song. It's it's very it's kind of a baptismal song. <laughs> Oh, okay. You know, you can get in the spirit. I hope y'all like it, Peculiar People, because if, if you're one of God's people, you're peculiar like me. <laughs> this is Margie Singleton, and you're listening to Peculiar People on the Douglas Coleman Show. I'm going down in the water, coming up a child of God, shouting out his praises, overflowing with.
That's about all the time we've got for the show today. I want to thank my special guest, Margie Singleton. It's great talking to her. And also thank you to Robert Marino for his great music. This is Douglas Coleman saying I'll see you when I see you.